That was not the worst of it though. The worst came later. First time I got stuck. The stranger had mentioned it but in the state I'd been in, I'd hardly noticed. One night at the end of the line, I was asked to leave the train. The world was one of closer to normal ones. The people were almost human as I recognized it. They were orange, sure, and hunched back, but other than that, they were practically normal. After the last world, where the, where the people had been hit, hit, hideously overweight, six breasted, with, with no nose, the orange guys were pretty much beautiful to me. I thought at first that the conductor was talking to someone else, but I was the only one in the car, and moreover, I understood him. The, or the oranges certainly hadn't been speaking English all day, but nothing was. I could understand what he was saying. When I stood, I began to realize why why I couldn't stand up straight. I was hunched back. And as I saw my reflection against the window, as I, I, I couldn't stand up straight, I was hunched back. And I saw the reflection against the window. I excited, I exceeded orange. I pieced together the rest from there. Stuck meant that I was trapped in this world for some reason and stuck look, looked like dumb as well. Which would be handy if I wanted to take the opportunity to leave the subway station, which is pos possible, possibly most time. It requires a lot of care and is quite overwhelming. Alien worlds are a little revolting. I found. I found. You try to compare them to your own, but the difference are so vast that. It just makes you sick. I left the subway anyway because it was clear I was returning to the central hub. Would I take into calling the infinite line of subway trains that night or any other night? I soon found out. Whatever home had to let me go on notice wasn't working any longer. I considered briefly staying, but this place wasn't home. It could never be. Even if they looked like me, their culture was bound to be different. That was a lesson I've learned before. Even worlds where the people are absolutely, absolutely the same for me are, are dangerous. I was, once in, I was once in a world where the people looked just like me. Well, actually, they look Brazilian. But that was more than close enough and learned the hard way that the gestures that mean hello meant something greatly insulting. Insulting enough that I've been beaten half to death while the crowd looked on with approval. Besides, even if that place had a culture I could fake, I didn't want to stay. I wanted one of two things, to find my way home or to find the stranger who sent me on this path and beat the shit out of him. So I wanted to move on. I wasn't sure though. I, c I could do, I could do to that poor sucker what had to be done to me. Could I really force someone else to wander the eternal underground like me? It turned out I would find out soon, just like the stranger had. But I was between I was torn between the desire to warn him away and desire to bring him to the end of the line so I could leave this this more world already. The last night he followed me to the end of the line, just as I had once done. He hadn't managed to work up the nerve to sit right across from me. Though and as soon as the train stopped at the terminal, he rushed off. I waited, hoping the conductor 
wouldn't see me, and I could continue on, but to no avail. I left the car, and to the mesh ru rushed off without me, and I cursed inside. As I walked around the corner towards the ticket booth, the young man who'd been following me attacked. He had a wicked curved knife and could have caught me by surprise. Black. But I traveled through hostile alien wars for several years. My reflexes were sharp. We struggled vigorously before I managed to wrestle the knife from him. I don't know how it got in his neck. I don't think I wanted to kill him. I'd I hadn't even been angry, remembering my own building rage from so long before. Afterwards, as he lay there, bled out, I got pissed. I kicked him repeatedly, shouting, You dick! You were supposed to... Kick! Kick! To follow me! Kick! I fled the scene of the crime, but not for long. I was there bright and early the next day to catch the first subway of the morning. And, then, and that night, when I rode to the end of the line, I was visible to the conductor again. I guess you can either kill them or bring them with you if you want to return to Central Hub. I was invisible being... I was, oh, I was always orange and hunchback still. I stayed that way until the next time I became stuck. The next time I killed. That one went much faster. I didn't wait for him to follow me. Once I was recognized as a stranger, I, re I re recognized her as the next one. And I made my choice. I wouldn't bring anyone else into this. It makes me wonder though about the stranger who inducted me. It makes me wonder though about the stranger who abducted me. I wonder what he originally looked like and whatever I wonder what he originally looked like and whether he knew he could have killed me. I wonder too about the others I saw back home. And on the rare few I come across since I left, do they kill them or take them? And whichever one they choose, do they consider it mercy? I can't bring myself to talk to them, to ask. We're, we're demanding either way. And the man should suffer in solitude. I've killed 15 of them now. And I've gotten very good at it. But I've made the decision I'm done killing innocents. At least before I return to Central Hub. I filled the backpack with as much paper as I could, cram it into it. And I wrote this story over and over again to be left in as many subway trains as I can. A couple of thousand messages in a bottle cast in a sea of steel rails. This is a request and a warning. My request, above all, was that you find my mother and tell her, tell her a lie. It's a white lie, don't worry. Tell my mother that I love her that I'm trying to come home. It may give her some hope, or a small measure of peace. I wish it were true too. But here's the thing, I've been thinking of myself as like an odyssey, lost and adrift, looking to return to familiar shores. But I'm not at sea. I am lost in the endless tunnel labyrinth. The difference is important because the labyrinths are designed to build, are designed to build endless tunnels. Somebody or something made this impossible place. And they must be held account accountable for what they've done to me. They cast me, they cast me this, but I won't play the part any longer either. 
The strange rules of this place have turned me from human. I began to something else. Then something else again. They have made me a monster. And so I will I will look look for them in this huge lamp labyrinth. And if I can, I will tear it down around me and destroy those that built it. My warning is that you should be very, very in public places of silent be very wary in public places of silent expressless men and women. Keep your distance. They may kill you or they may do worse. If you see them, run far and fast. And even more importantly, I warn you, I beg you, don't ride the train to the end of the line.